We have 35,000 funded projects. Some of them are actually shovels in ground. Some of them are uh, getting to that point in 4,500 communities around the country. Uh, many of these are going to uh, communities of color, um, certainly on the entrepreneurial side. Uh, over 10.5 million small business applications in the last few years. And yes, uh, we've tracked many of those uh, to uh, racial and also gender. Hey, Grill fam, it's Jaron Keith Gaynor, White House correspondent and managing editor of politics at The Grio. And I'm here with Jared Bernstein, who is the chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Jared, welcome to The Grio. Pleasure to have you. Oh, it's great to be here with you. So President Biden is uh, giving his speech on Bidenomics today uh, in Chicago. First, what is Bidenomics? Why coin this term? And what is the president's message to uh, the American public as it relates to his economic policy? Well, Bidenomics is, uh, very simply put, growing the economy from the middle out and the bottom up. And one reason that's important is because it stands in direct contrast to the previous dominant economic philosophy of trickle-down economics. And this is the idea uh, disproved by uh, decades of empirical evidence uh, that if you just cut taxes for rich people, that's going to help uplift the middle class and the poor. Uh, President Biden has known for a long time uh, that that doesn't work. That's not how you grow an economy. You grow an economy by helping the middle class, by helping folks at the bottom, through three pillars. The uh, Bidenomics has three pillars. The first pillar is investing in America, reversing decades of disinvestment in our bridges, our ports, our schools, our environment. Part two, empowering and educating workers. And part three, promoting more competition to help lower costs on behalf of consumers and small businesses. And uh, the White House has touted the record low black unemployment rate. Uh, which economic policies made uh, during the Biden-Harris administration uh, would you uh, say contributed to that record low unemployment? Well, first of all, let me just uh, plug that right into uh, Bidenomics. I told you that uh, Pillar 2 is empowering workers. One of the best ways you can provide workers with more bargaining clout so they can get have a better chance of, of, of getting their fair share, given their contribution to the economy, is by running tight labor markets. And not just for a month or two, but persistently. The unemployment rate overall has been below 4% for a year and a half. And to answer your question, that relates directly to the uh, American Rescue Plan, which is the uh, measure that the president uh, put in place very shortly after he got there. Now, you know, if you think back then, and it's a ways back now, uh, yes, it uh, put shots in arms, it also put checks in pockets, preserved small businesses, and helped set up the strongest labor market recovery we've seen. 13 million jobs, almost 800,000 in manufacturing, and yes, some of the lowest unemployment rates on record for Blacks, for Hispanics, and for women, that's increased their bargaining clout and uh, helped to uh, boost their wages as well. And as these jobs are being created, especially uh, those manufacturing jobs from the CHIPS Act uh, and uh, jobs from the infrastructure law, how is, is the White House able to track uh, how many of these jobs are going to Black workers and these contracts are going to uh, Black business owners? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've done is uh, try to get uh, these measures uh, outside of the big sort of corporate sector cities in America. And so now we have 35,000 funded projects. Some of them are actually shovels in ground. Some of them are uh, getting to that point in 4,500 communities around the country. Uh, many of these are going to uh, communities of color, um, uh, certainly on, on the entrepreneurial side, uh, over 10.5 million small business applications in the last few years. And yes, uh, we've tracked many of those uh, to uh, uh, in terms of their uh, uh, racial and also gender uh, makeup. And, and uh, you know, we've seen akin to the, to the job market story, uh, I told you, important gains uh, for black Americans uh, as well as, as, as women. And you know, very importantly, just to reiterate this, I think the geographical point is important too. We've got to reach rural America. And you know, the, just this week, it's, it's very much in keeping with Bidenomics, you saw a $42 billion announcement so that we can have high speed, affordable broadband internet uh, access, uh, regardless of where you live. That's, that's oxygen in today's economy. You know, you really can't live without it. 
and um, that's that's reaching uh, uh, folks, uh, you know, beyond uh, our city limits, um, uh, as well as uh, you know, the communities of color. And a major economic policy from President Biden uh, to that seeks to close the racial wealth gap was the is the student loan forgiveness program, which we know is before the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court was to uh, strike down this program, uh, how does the White House uh, see its plan to uh, close that racial wealth gap if this uh, program does not uh, move forward? Well, I think we should avoid hypotheticals about what the Supreme Court is, is going to do or not do. Certainly, we will hear from the president uh, 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 one way or the other when that decision comes down. Um, what I think is uh, most important to the question you asked is what is the president doing to help promote uh, educational opportunities for black Americans. And here you have some of the deepest investments in uh, HBCUs that any administration has ever engaged in. You have a significant increase in Pell Grants. And yes, you have this proposal uh, to uh, provide student debt relief that um, by far disproportionately uh, helps uh, people uh, and communities of color. Now, uh, depending on which way that goes, I mentioned the president will talk about that. But I think one thing that uh, we'll, we'll certainly be hearing about in coming days in this space is improvements we've made to the income-based repayment plan. Uh, this is a, uh, another way of handling student debt. It's a payment plan that's a function of, of people's income so that their student debt uh, is far more manageable. We've made this uh, much more affordable to student borrowers, and that, again, disproportionately will help black, uh, uh, black debtors. And lastly, uh, jobs are uh, are plentiful, but wages is a, is a big issue. This, there continues to be a gap between uh, wages earned by black workers and white workers. Uh, how uh, top of mind is that for the White House? Oh, that is uh, right at the top of uh, the agenda. And again, pillar two of Bidenomics is empowering and educating workers. Both of those are very important. I talked a little about the empowerment. One way that happens is through tight labor markets. Another is through unions, and we certainly have you know, the most pro-union president uh, uh, in our lifetimes here. Uh, but one of the things that we have investigated here at the Council of Economic Advisors, and if you go to our blog on our, on our website, you'll see a, a, a report on this very question you asked. Very low unemployment for Black Americans has helped significantly boost their wage gains and helped to close the gap, not all the way, but helped to make progress in closing the gap in the Black-White uh, differential there. So um, that, uh, you know, when, you, when, when low unemployment disproportionately helps less advantaged workers, when it disproportionately helps communities of color, that's, um, that's a, actually quite a reliable way to start chipping away at those gaps.